Hey, welcome back to the RV Solar Channel. Uh, today I'm working on a 2017 Sprinter van that I think you've probably seen before. We worked on it this spring. Customers love the upgrades, but they want more. So we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to upgrade from the 2000 Multi Plus to a 3000 Multi Plus, which is going to be tricky the way we did it, but I think we can make it fit. Uh, then the other thing we're going to be doing is upgrading their batteries from the AGMs to epic 300 amp hour lithiums and that's gonna be tricky too so we're gonna be doing that and then the last thing is i'm gonna try and hook up uh, a victron component called the cyrix i think that's the correct pronunciation it's a smart uh, two-way battery combiner and uh let me show you a little bit about that because i think that's the most interesting thing to me so this is the uh cyrix ct intelligent battery combiner comes with a little manual here and what's interesting about it is, uh, one, it keeps itself cool, so it measures for if this connection is getting too hot, it disconnects. That's also going to protect your alternator some as well. Uh, but what's most interesting about it is, I believe, it measures your starter battery and your house battery, and if the uh, obviously if the you know if your voltage is high here on your start battery, which is number one, it's going to engage this switch and you're going to charge your house battery from the alternator, which is what we want to do. Uh, but this particular customer has been having problems with their starting battery going dead. That's why I got that, or I've got a charger on it right now because it's not holding up very well. But what this will do is when battery two or the house battery is higher than battery one, it will then also connect. So if solar is charging from this system or from shore power. Now there are trickle chargers on these, which you can do that, but they only work when this is charging from shore power. We need something that will intelligently connect uh, from shore, or from, not from shore, from solar to charge the chassis. And that is a challenge, and I think this is the device to do it, of course, from our friends at Victron. It does come with a nice little diagram. You can kind of see what's going on. Uh, some good information here if uh well it looks like it's been around for a while so anyway uh all the languages you'd expect if you're bilingual multilingual quadlingual whatever so uh that's what we're doing there then uh this is the 2000 multi plus that i pulled out and uh this is one we attached with some velcro industrial strength velcro and that actually system that worked really well and i'm planning to reproduce it with the 3000 there but let's go inside quick and this is where it was i've already pulled it out taped off my positive here but the 3000 is going to be tough it's uh about 23 23 and a half inches tall and that's pretty much all of this space to the transfer switch here so I need to make some more room for it. So my plan is to actually cut part of this cabinet out to make that work. And I already took a look. And there's plenty of room back here where I can do that. You can see this, there's this dead space here. So I should be able to cut this out without a problem. That'll give that inverter enough room to kind of snake its way back in there. Then for the battery, well, as a lot of you know, we've been experimenting with Epic batteries recently and there's a lot to love. Um, there's a couple things I'm apprehensive about, but let me show you these uh, 300 amp hour ones. Oh, look who's here, it's a bear, hello. Hey, if everybody doesn't know, if you come to visit, hey, down, he's still a pup, kinda. Hey, no, this is bear. He, uh, very excited, likes to greet everybody, sometimes with some barks. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, but he just, <laughs> he's he's working on being a good boy. There you go, good sets. Yeah, and he loves to get a paw up like that. Like, okay, all right, I'll hold your paw. Okay, all right, why don't you just chew on your own paw? That sounds good, okay. <laughs> Bear, we're talking to him about these new Epic batteries. Well, they're not super new. Uh, and just the different batteries we're using, okay? All right, so to compare, this is, I'm trying to talk to our YouTube friends, bud. 
to compare, this is a 300 amp hour lithium battery heated with Bluetooth, okay? A lot to love there. Oh, jeez. All right. Bear, all right, back outside, back outside. Come on. Go. I don't know what to tell you, bud. You're just, you're being too much of a bear right now. All right, where were we? The uh, 300 amp hour Epic heated Bluetooth battery. 300 amp hours in this form factor. Really nice. There's a couple of things I think this would work perfect for. Uh, one, uh, we're gonna make it work here, but where it would work absolutely perfect is something like a, uh, like actually an Airstream. I think this will fit perfect in those battery boxes. And just like that, through the magic of YouTube, I have one of these installed in there. Let's go take a look at it, shall we? All right, here we go. Slide on in with me here. Oh, here is one of them. I had to get a little creative. Here's, uh, here's the old battery. And here's the other battery that has yet to be uh, removed. So you can kind of see how that ends up being. And uh, yeah, I did have to get a little creative to get it in here. I had to, I ended up putting it on the side, which tell you the truth, I kind of like as far as being able to put these terminals on. Uh, I was never comfortable with all the work up on top here. So, and then uh, just ratchet strap this in here. And this is where, again, um, as much as I don't like these completely sealed batteries, a battery like this underneath the chassis of a vehicle, it pretty much has to be. So uh, that's what we did there and just put some uh, ring terminals here. And then, uh, of course, another ring terminal on the other side there. And then, uh, yeah, just ratchet strapped in there. I did put some uh, dielectric grease on here just to try to keep these terminals a little bit in better shape. Um, yeah, then I just got the other one to do. Then we can get back to work. Things on the inside. All right, got the uh, other side in here. All buttoned up, snugged up. So I can finally get out of here and clean up all my tools. Spent way too much time underneath here. Now, in the inside here, uh, we have been hard at work here. Actually, let's let's talk about this here first. So, back to the inside here. Uh, decided the customer doesn't need a chair at all, so I'm just gonna keep that and... Uh, I'm joking, okay, I'm, that's a joke. I'm gonna put their chair back. But before I put their chair back, um, I'm uh, wiring up that uh, Cyrex CT battery combiner, and uh, boy, does it work pretty slick. Here, check this out. All right, we got a meter here, right? So if I, and it's kind of tough to do with one hand. Let's see if I can find a ground. All right, finally found a decent ground. So see if we can look through those wires there for the voltage that we get. So we get 14.48 on the, uh, I think this is the starter, but no, that's the house battery side. And on the start battery side, we get the same thing or pretty darn close to it because this solenoid is engaged. Uh, because pretty much as soon as one side of the battery is over 13.2 volts, this will connect. So now it's charging the start battery system. And then if either of them fall below that, then they disengage. Uh, so this way, the, the house system charges the chassis system, chassis system charges the house system. Uh, now, originally we had talked about doing a uh, Lynx, or not the Lynx, the Orion, the new Orion 50 amp DC DC charger. But I haven't figured out a way to make this work, and this seemed to be, this is really important for the customer, how to make this work and that DC DC charger work at the same time. Because I think in the end, because this would be engaged at the same time as the DC DC charger is connected. So with that in mind, I think it would end up back feeding itself and we don't want to do that. Uh, now the good news is this Cyrex CT here, it is temperature controlled. So our concerns with connecting our alternator directly to our battery bank is uh, heat, we don't want to overload our wires or our alternator. Well, this doesn't monitor the temperature of the alternator, but 
it does monitor the temperature of this connection, this solenoid here. And if it gets too warm, it disconnects, which would also give a break to the alternator. Now, as far as my concerns with the alternator go, these Mercedes Sprinter vans, they're designed to have, there's two big AGM batteries in the back. Uh, those can suck up a lot of amps, especially when they're deeply discharged. Pretty much the same amount as a lithium would take. What I plan on doing before we, before the video ends and before we uh, put our stamp of approval on this, we're gonna want to discharge the batteries and then start the engine here and measure the amp load and make sure it's within uh, specifications. And to that point, I'm gonna add a 120, or what is this? Yeah, 120 amp uh, automatic resetting thermal breaker. We like to add these uh, for systems like this that will also protect this as well. So that if we're pushing over 120 amps, let's say the batteries are extremely deeply discharged and it's gonna potentially overload your alternator or other things like that, that will disconnect in addition to the uh, Cyrix CT doing its job. Multiple layers of protection. Let's do it safe. Let's do it right. Now, uh, and speaking of doing it right or doing it at all, <laughs> uh, we got this MultiPlus stuffed in here. Now, remember, there was a 2000 MultiPlus in here. We upgraded to a 3000 because while uh, this customer's on the road, they want to be able to use the microwave and an Instant Pot at the same time. And who am I to tell them no, that they can't do that or shouldn't? What I had to do to secure this was uh, I've got some double-sided uh, or some like industrial strength Velcro on some foam pads. And so that's kind of what's keeping this secure. I will take some of the foam padding that we have that came uh, in the boxes and probably try and put it in there. But there's really not a good way to mount this in here because we are right over the wheel well right now. So I don't want to be screwing anything down into it. Uh, we kind of got to do a somewhat soft mount. Uh, but it had been working for the last year, so I don't see why this won't continue to work well. Um, yeah, we got our ins and outs ran in there. We have our um, yeah our mains run. Uh, we're doing the links, or not the links, the VE bus smart dongle there for the... Uh, whatever for controlling it, the inverter, setting your input, current limits, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I think we just got to do some programming on here and that sort of stuff. And then this is going to be good to go. The batteries are all charged up. That went well. Uh, none of the connections got hot. This didn't get too hot. I did have this cover on while I was doing that testing and uh, it never thermally derated. So that's a good sign. We do have all of this area in here to exhaust into. So while this compartment is quite limited, it's actually working out great that it's exhausting all of the air out of there. And then it can suck some fresh air in right through that hole. And maybe, maybe we'll add another hole here somewhere where it can pull in some more fresh air. Uh, I don't know that I wanna start adding more Right away, right there. Although, what is this here? Is that an intake hole? Huh, it is. Well, my stars, this is an air intake as well. Well, would you look at that? I think we're in great shape for cooling. I just discovered that along with you. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. All right, next morning here, uh, got a little space heater running, because why not? It is getting cold here in Minnesota, so we're running a space heater in our lovely shop. Uh, and one of the things I wanted to mention is uh, it's always good to do a load test. Anytime you're doing something like this where you got a big inverter, you want to really make sure your connections are good and everything's staying cool. And I did that. I just crawled underneath there. Everything's staying nice and cool. All right, we've been uh, running this uh, heater for a while. It's working great. Uh, battery's down to about five to 6% overall. Uh, I do wanna show a little update on here. So you can see our uh, coach battery is down to 12.1 and the chassis is still at 12.8, which is perfect because they're now disconnected. So now the other thing that I wanna test is I wanna make sure we're not over amping any of this. So my plan is to, 
start the engine, and then I'm going to track the amps through these meter or through this with uh, my clamp meter here, and we will see what happens. Uh, currently, we're only doing four amps, uh, and that's just running the lights and that sort of stuff. But once we start this up, uh, the amps are likely going to flow pretty good. All right, as you can hear, engine is running, and this is about perfect. 86 amps into the battery, if you can see here. So that's doing great, and uh, so we're protected at 120. This is also rated at 120, and this is about as bad as it's ever going to get because the batteries are they're pretty deeply discharged. What you'll notice is the amps should draw down relatively quickly as the volts go up on the batteries because lithium it uh, well the way that just the way the charge curve works so it's already the amps are already going down and they'll probably settle in at around 50 60 amps pretty much the same as an Orion now the reason why we use a DC DC charger is twofold one we want to protect the wiring and two we want to protect the alternator but like I said in systems like this the, the wiring is there. It's not six gauge. It's, uh, I think this is almost, uh, well, it's two or one aught. Plenty beefy for, you know, 80, 90 amps that we're seeing. And as the voltage quickly rises to 13 and a half volts, the amps are going to go down dramatically. And we'll show that here in a little bit. Uh, and then the other reason you want to be running a DC DC charger is because you want to make sure you charge the batteries up properly. However, most alternators will get you there. And in this case, we've got solar. Uh, we've also got generator. We've also got some other things. So, um, in a perfect world, or there's a lot of reasons to use one. In this case, we're not going to use one, uh, because it's critical that our start battery actually works. So we want to keep that charged. So we're going to use the Victron, uh, Cyrix CT to accomplish that. And it's doing all the jobs for us. And, uh, like I said, I think this is going to work great for this customer. And, uh, I'm sure some people are going to leave some comments down below, and I encourage you to do that. A um, lot of different ways to skin this cat. I know it's probably going to be controversial, uh, but in my experience, this is going to work fine. All right, big moment here. Uh, got the seat on. Got everything else buttoned up in the back there. We're good to go. Got our batteries secured, and uh, the batteries are mostly charged. I think it's about 60, 70%. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn on and I'm going to pull it out because we got to get another project in here. But I'm going to see how many amps go in there. And because I got my phone, the only way we're going to be able to do it is I'm going to have to, uh, uh, well, you're going to have to trust me basically. Uh, well, maybe I'll put a screenshot up from the, uh, app. I'll take a screenshot when I'm pulling out and then we'll talk about it and, uh, send you on your way. Looks like I got some kind of grease on my face or something, but, uh, Hopefully that makes me more trustworthy, I guess. Jeez. Anyway, so how things go? Well, uh, I'll show it right here. Uh, we're at about 70 some percent and we're getting about 70 to 65 amps into the battery. That's perfect. Uh, I mean, an Orion XS is going to give us 50, uh, but I mean, we're, we're kind of in the butter zone here. Uh, for this particular uh, project, I think this is perfect. So, uh, if you need help with any of, uh, your RVs, uh, camper vans like this, class B's, uh, whatever you got, uh, hopefully you trust me, even though I look like a complete slob and I've been, uh, nibbling on, uh, carbon grease, um, uh, check us out at sodasolar.com. The R on that one is disappearing, so we're gonna have to get a new one, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Uh, so without further ado, I'll send you on your way to your next video. Enjoy. Uh, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, yeah, have a great one.